Hey friends, uh, my name is Lance Hawley at Harding School of Theology, and I want to uh, go through a few texts, one today, um, uh, from Isaiah that come up a lot in, around this time of the year when we're celebrating the birth of Christ. So the most prominent text uh, that I hear, and for good reason, is Isaiah 7 verse 14. So in that text, uh, it's, it's well known as where we have our God with us, Emmanuel name. What's going on in the background of that text is that there's a, this is a time of war. So there are warring nations, and King Ahaz, the king of Judah, is being pressured uh, by a couple of neighboring countries to join a coalition to fight against the empire of Assyria. And Isaiah is giving him advice, and in the midst of this, he... Uh, tells them that there will be a sign. And so Isaiah 7, 14 um, reads like this, Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman, and some translations have virgin, is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread shall be deserted. So in other words, before this child gets to the age where he's eating solid foods and knows the difference between good and evil, this war, these neighboring countries will be done away with. God is going to protect his people. And so this child, Emmanuel, which is in Hebrew, God, El, and with us, Imanu, so God with us, um, is a historical child um, uh, for, from the 8th century of the time of Isaiah. It was a sign for that time in that political scene. And uh, the word here, sometimes there's controversy, is Alma. The Hebrew word is Alma. It means young woman. It could be a virgin woman, but there's another Hebrew word for that. But the Greek translation, and I'm going to get a little technical for just a moment, the Greek translation has Parthenos, um, which is virgin. And Matthew, when we get to Matthew, Matthew also uses that word. And um, so there's a couple of uh, things to talk about here. One is that the significance of this child uh, for that time, and we don't know whose child it was. Some think it's Hezekiah, Ahaz's son. Some think it's um, Isaiah's son, like we have Isaiah's sons otherwise in Isaiah 6 through 9. One named Sha'ar Yashuv, a remnant will return. Another named Maher Shalal Hashbaz, which is something about like quick to the spoils, hurry the plunder. Um, so these children are like signs, and this one is a sign that God will protect his people. Uh, so the child symbolizes, the child is not God. The child symbolizes God's intervention and protection, which I think is really important. So when we turn our uh, attention to um, Matthew, of course, Matthew 1, verse 23 when Joseph is having a vision and God gives him this message and quotes this verse. It goes in Matthew 1, 23, Look, the virgin will conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So Matthew's not overly concerned with the historical context from the 8th century and the child of, of the Isaiah oracle. The whole narrative in Matthew is about the virginity of Mary and the miraculous nature of her, uh, this child's birth, where it's not really about a, a miraculous birth in Isaiah. It certainly is in Matthew. And having experienced the mir miraculous birth, the virgin birth of Jesus, those early Christians um, read, read Isaiah afresh, read it anew in light of their experiences. And they identify Jesus as an embodiment of God with us. Um, it's interesting that uh, in early Christian interpretation, Isaiah um, is primarily used, it comes up all the time, but it's primarily used to illuminate the significance of Jesus as king. Uh, not necessarily to prove his legitimacy as the king, 
they've experienced Jesus and now they're reading Isaiah and seeing, look, God's been talking about this. And in Matthew, we have they will call him Emmanuel, um, and which is different. In Isaiah, it's she would call him Emmanuel. In the Greek, it's actually you will call him Emmanuel. But in Matthew, it's they will call him Emmanuel. In other words, the people who had witnessed Jesus would recognize Jesus as the embodiment, the fullest sense of God with us. So the birth of Jesus is a political event. Uh, just like Emmanuel in the 8th century, that's a political event. It's about doing away with war um, and bringing peace and protection for his people. And so in Isaiah, we have this symbolic protection, but the birth of Jesus is also a political event. Um, in this backwater region of Jerusalem, a child born to a poor young girl represents the breaking in of the power of God. God with us, the one who brings protection and justice among the nations.